a grace to all those of you who are with us here in the church and grace to all those of you joining us online and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So as so many of you know, Jewel and I are headed out on our yearly vacation next weekend and we're starting, as is our want, with a little New England adventure, uh, a little time on the coast of Rhode Island, a few clams, a little lobster, a beach. It's going to be perfect. Can you tell? I already wish I was there. Uh, it's going to be fabulous. Uh, Jewel and I have loved New England ever since we were kids, actually, even though neither of us grew up here. Explanation? Murder, she wrote. <laughs> you, you, guys, you guys remembered Murder, she wrote. I bet uh, the show where the inimitable Angela Lansbury plays a mystery novelist, Jessica Fletcher, who somehow always manages to solve actual crimes in her little seaside town of Cabot Cove, Maine. Cabot Cove might have been fictional, but it got Jewel and me hooked on New England. Though I do have to say, given how small Cabot Cove is, it seemed to have a terrible crime rate. There was at least one murder every single week, it seemed, for Jessica Fletcher to have a case to crack. Uh, but anyway, uh, my favorite part of each episode is actually the end. Now, Jewel is so clever that she can normally predict who is going to be the bad guy about 10 minutes into the 30-minute episode, but I never can. It is always shocking to me at the end, so I love the big reveal. Jessica Fletcher always gives some great big speech explaining exactly how the crime took place, exactly who did it, and the producers interlace her speech with little flashbacks to earlier scenes in the episode, little clips showing you all of the clues that you missed for the preceding 25 minutes. They show the bellhop scowling as the multimillionaire goes into the hotel, the bellhop's sheepish admission that he owed someone some money, the moment when he stuck the master key into his pocket, the bellhop hiding behind the bathroom door, the muffled sounds of the multimillionaire drowning in the bathtub, the bellhop tossing his body into the sea, and so on, right? You guys can see it. You can see this little flashback series. It's always so impressive when Angela Lansbury narrates this part in persona, Jessica Fletcher, because Jewel always looks at me and says, I told you so, and I am always shocked, always shocked. It doesn't matter how many times I've seen the episode either. I never know what's happening when it's happening, only afterward. I only seem to understand what's happening afterward. When it turns out it was him the whole time. <laughs> it was him all along. This summer, we have been exploring the nature of faith. And today, before I leave you all for a little Sabbath time, we will conclude our series on faith. We've been discussing what faith is, how we get it, and what it's for. We talked early on in June about how faith is a form of trust. It's finding God to be trustworthy in the course of our relationship with God. Now, we can accept or resist in trusting God with our lives and livelihoods. God doesn't force us to trust Him. But faith itself, that trust itself, is really a gift when it comes about. It comes about organically as we begin to get to know God, to spend time with God, and so on. Just like trust in general arises between people as we spend time with each other, get to know each other, and so on. This trust just kind of happens to us. It is grace, not a work. When we embrace faith, we find peace. Peace even in the Orlando airport when all of the flights are canceled, as we discussed last week. We find peace, we find relief in God's promise 
that everything will be okay. Certainly, whatever it is we are in at that moment will be okay. And God's promise that he has mysteriously made everything okay in Jesus Christ. We find peace and relief. So faith is trust in God. It comes about by grace inside us. And its purpose, what it's for, is not to be our ticket into heaven, as it were. God, I believe, is already taking care of that. Faith's purpose is rather to relieve our anxiety and console us with God's promises and with God's presence. So how do we know when we have faith or we don't? If faith is, as I've been suggesting the last two months, something much more subtle and much more precious than intellectually assenting to his list of truth claims or doctrines, how do we know where we stand? How do we know exactly how much we trust God at any given moment? And that's where this morning's gospel comes in. So Jesus and his disciples are traveling from place to place around the Sea of Galilee. And crowds of people are following them. One day, they are swarmed by one such crowd. And Jesus asks his disciples, how are we going to feed all these people? And famously, the disciples find a little boy who has five loaves and two fish. You all know the story. Jesus proceeds to take the loaves to bless and to break them, rather like we do in the sacrament of the altar. And then Jesus distributes them to the crowd and so also the fish, John says, as though nothing particularly impressive is going on. And so also the fish. The whole passage has a kind of nonchalance about it. The people eat their fill, and then Jesus instructs the, the disciples to gather up the fragments left over, and they fill 12 baskets with the leftovers. And then, only then, only then does John say, anyone notices what's been going on. <laughs> then, at that point only, does John continue, when the people saw the sign that he had done. <laughs> it's only after it's over. The people see the sign only after it's over. After Jesus took the loaves and the fish and gave them out, after the people had eaten, after the disciples had gathered, gathered up the leftovers, then the people realize what's happened. The disciples in the crowd only realize what's happened in retrospect. They discover the miracle. They perceive God's saving action among them only after it's over. And so often that is how it works with us, too. The life of faith, friends, is a roller coaster. I don't know about you, but at least it's a roller coaster for me. It's full of contradictions, uncertainties, and doubts. Some days, we find it easy to trust God with our lives. And some days, we just don't. We just don't. And even on, even on the easy days, we might find ourselves trusting something bigger than us, which we call God, without having the slightest clue what that word means, or even whether we believe in such a thing. We find ourselves trusting something we still haven't quite intellectually convinced ourselves really exists. And all of that is okay. All that's okay. And this is what I have found myself preaching over and over. Certainly it's what I've been preaching over and over this last year, because it is the word that I most 
need to hear. If Christian faith is true, and I believe it is, all of that's okay. You're okay. Wherever you happen to stand on this thing called faith. Because this is exactly how it seems to have worked for the people who met Jesus in person in the first century. Miracle unfolding all around them. God at work in Jesus of Nazareth right in front of them handing them these little pieces of bread and fish, and they haven't the slightest idea, at least at the time. If that's how it worked for them, why in the world would we think it would be any different for us? And I think that if you were to gather up the fragments of your life, rather like the disciples gathered up the fragments of the loaves and the fishes. If you were to pick up the fragments of your life, and if you were to run them kind of like those little flashback scenes at the end of Murder, She Wrote, where you see all the clues that you missed the first time through, you sitting next to your parents in your childhood pew eating Cheerios, you running down the center aisle dressed as an angel in the Christmas pageant. You on your first date with your eventual spouse. You when you taught your kid how to ride a bike. You the first time your kid fell off their bike. Or you when you were so sick you couldn't speak. Or you when you thought everything was over. You on the best day of your life and you on the worst one. I think that if you ran all of those scenes through your mind's eye, you'd find after the fact, turns out you had more faith than you thought. Turns out you trusted God more than you thought you did. Because it turns out it was him the whole time. It was him all along. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.